Hello and welcome to the FSAI Breakfast Bite and Food Safety Training. You're so welcome and thank you for joining us this morning. I'm Elaine Gibson from the FSAI Communications Department and today I'm joined by Ruth Confrey, our Training and Compliance Manager in the FSAI. Today's event will last 40 minutes. There will be a 30 minute presentation followed by a 10 minute Q&A. If you do have any questions throughout the presentation, feel free to drop them into the questions box. There's also a handout section where we have put some useful resources and information about food safety training. And if you are on social media, don't be afraid to let us know you're here. You can send us a message with the hashtag FSAI events, or you can tag us at FSAI info on Twitter and Instagram. So without further ado, I'm going to pass you over to Ruth, who will take you through the presentation. Good morning and thanks very much Elaine. I'm delighted to be here and see so many people logged in and interested in learning about food safety training. You're very welcome to this presentation um, and I need to thank all of the, the training and the uh, communications team for setting everything up in the background and Marcus I know is set up that if something happens to my broadband or anything else that he's able to take over so that'll be great. Thank you very much. I'm going to turn off my webcam while I present and I'll turn it back on again at the end when we're doing the questions and answer session, just to enable you to better concentrate without being distracted by looking at me. So I'm going to turn off the webcam now and then we're going to get started. So in this webinar, I'm going to cover what the training requirements are. So what is set out in law that you must do in relation to food safety training? I'm also going to talk about the options for meeting those requirements and outline to you some of the resources that FSAI can provide um, for you as a food business operator to help you meet those requirements. And then, as we've mentioned, at the end, there's going to be time for questions and answers. So if you do have questions as I go along through the presentation, please do pop them into the questions box so that we can have them ready then at the end of the presentation. Just a quick mention about COVID-19. Um, COVID-19 doesn't really change any of the requirements in relation to food safety. There are obviously additional cleaning and social distancing requirements. Um, and we've all become very familiar with those over the last few months in relation to preventing the spread of the virus. But the basics of food safety remain the same. So in this session, I'm going to be talking about food safety training, and I'm not going to be discussing the training of staff in relation to new cleaning or social distancing measures. We do, however, have lots of information on our website in relation to COVID-19. Lots of really useful information about the implications for food businesses and it also includes links to guidance that's been provided by the Health Service Executive and also Falch Ireland. So if you are looking for information in relation to COVID-19 and how it affects you as a food business and reopening your business etc, please feel free to go to the website. It's on our homepage, it's very clearly signposted and you'll be able to find information there. But this webinar is really about food safety training and how you can meet those requirements. So what are the legal requirements in relation to training? So food safety training requirements are contained in Regulation 852 of 2004, which is on the hygiene of foodstuffs. And it states that food business operators must ensure that food handlers are supervised and instructed and or trained in food hygiene matters commensurate with their work activity. It also requires that those responsible for the development and maintenance of the food business's HACCP system must, be received, must have received adequate training in the application of HACCP principles. So what does commensurate mean? It simply means that whatever level of responsibility someone has in your food business, that they must be adequately trained for that level of responsibility. So if we think about it outside of the food safety context, if you have a new employee starting in your food business, you're not going to hand them the keys the first day that they arrive and tell them that they're responsible for running the show for the day, locking up and cashing up at the end of the day. You're going to start gradually training them on different aspects of your business, you're going to build up their training then in line with the level of responsibility that you assign to them. It'll be similar for food safety training. 
although there are some very important first steps that people must know about food safety before they handle food within your business. They will need to be trained on these as soon as they start work. And then further food safety training can be ongoing as they progress in the job. So we're going to talk in a little while about how to meet these training requirements, how you as a business can meet those requirements. But first of all, I'd like to ask you a question. So you should see a poll appearing on your screen now and you can click whichever answer is relevant to you. And then I'll talk a little bit about the results. So we're asking you, how do you manage food safety training within your business? And there's lots of answers coming in there. That's great. OK, brilliant. OK, I'm just waiting for the results to settle now. There's lots of people answering our question, which is brilliant. Thank you. So from the results, I can see that approximately 50%, so 52% use an in-house trainer for food safety. So you do it yourself. 27% use an external person to train their staff and 21% send staff on a food safety training course. So that's really good. There's a good spread there. So I think in this presentation, there'll be something for everybody. So the first thing to say about how you as a food business meet your training requirements is that one size does not fit all. What works for you might not work for the coffee shop down the road or the crash next door or whatever. So you really need to think about what's gonna work for your business. Some of the options that are available to you would be to um, recruit a food safety trainer. And some of you have said that that's what you, that's what you do. And then the other th options would include attending a course, availing of e-learning through online programs or doing the training yourself. So the most important thing is you must decide what works best for your staff and your business. So if you choose to use a food safety trainer to come to train your staff, there's a few things that you should consider. What makes the perfect trainer? So they must be suitably qualified. This means not only do they have experience in food safety, but it's also good if they have a knowledge of your business type whether you're a creche or a cafe or a manufacturing premises, they should have some experience in that sector as well. The training that they deliver for you should be tailored to your specific needs. And you can ask the trainer to tailor the course, the materials and the delivery to your needs. This will ensure that the training will provide real examples for your staff and real situations that they can relate to and that are relevant to their work. A good trainer will always encourage management participation because they know it's necessary to ensure that the training is successfully implemented after your staff have spent some time learning stuff. They must have the support of management when they go back to work to ensure that they can implement what they've learned. A lot of trainers will also offer follow up support after the training. So, for example, they might call back to your premises and check how you're getting on. Maybe even observe the staff practices and the implementation of the skills that have been learned on the course. Do they come recommended? So has somebody else in your sector used them or recommended them? Or can you talk to some of their previous clients just to get a feel for how they're going to be a good fit for your business? And will they show you some of the work they've done previous or show you some of the course materials that they're intending to use for your training course? you need to make sure that the materials in the course are suitable for your staff and your business. If you choose to attend a course, again, choose wisely. You need to consider, is the course suitable for your business? If you're a manufacturing business, there's probably not a lot of point in sending your staff on a training course that's been specifically designed for food handlers in a creche. So it really is better if the course you choose is relevant to your staff. So this will mean that they will get real life examples that are relevant to them and they can take back to the workplace and then they can use that knowledge immediately that they've learned. Also consider what training medium is most appropriate for your staff, whether it's e-learning, face-to-face, or maybe a blend of both. 
what will work best for your staff? And this is where you, as the food business operator or as the trainer within your business, you know your staff best. Are they very tech savvy? Would they prefer to be doing stuff on their on their um, mobile phones? Or do they prefer the face-to-face, -face, more personal face-to-face -face training? You know your staff best. Make sure that your money is well spent. And implementation of the skills that are learned on the training is the most important part of implementing that training, making sure that it's successful. You could also choose to do the training yourself. So how would you go about doing this? I'm going to go through some things that you'll need to be aware of. And also I'm going to outline a number of resources that FSAI has developed to help you with this option. So if you choose to conduct the training yourself, then you as a trainer need a few things. So you need a sufficient knowledge of food safety as well as a good background in the food industry. If you have both of these, then you're gonna know what you're talking about and you can speak with authority. You'll also need to have an understanding of the operational aspects of your business. For example, what are the pinch points that could cause difficulty from a food safety point of view? What are the shortcuts that people might take that could cause difficulties? And if you have a good understanding of the operational aspects of your business, you're going to know what these pinch points are, what these difficult areas are, these shortcuts that people might try to take. It's important also that you have an understanding of how people learn, and I'm going to give some detail on that in a little while. And you need to be comfortable explaining information to people. Something that seems really obvious or simple to you mightn't be clear to a trainee. And it's up to you then to bridge the gap, to make sure that they understand that they're not just hearing blah, 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 that they can, you can actually distill the information down into a format that they can understand and then that they can use when they go back to their workstation. So just some points to note in particular about how adults learn. So adults learn best if they want to and when they need to learn something. They learn by linking what they are learning now to past, present and future experiences. They learn by practicing what they've been taught. Adults may require, adults may require help and guidance when learning and they like to get feedback that they're on the right track. And finally, adults learn best in an informal and non-threatening environment. Adults retain 10% of what they read, 20% of what they hear, 30% of what they see and hear, sorry, 30% of what they see, 50% of what they see and hear, 70% of what they discuss or say to others, 80% of what they experience personally, and a whopping 90% of what they say and do. So I think those statistics show that we need to use many different approaches and methods when we're training just to ensure that the learning is effective. So you can see if you were to give your trainees, just hand them a workbook or hand them a, a, a leaflet, 10% might go in. Whereas if you have implemented lots of different things, if you talk to them about it, if you show them things, if you demonstrate things, if you participate them, participate with them in the workstation, on the job, to train them physically in what they're doing and how they should apply their skills, you're way up there in and around the 80 and 90%, which is where we really want to be. So now I'd like to talk to you about the training guides that FSAI has produced with industry inspectors and training providers. The training guides detail what skills people should have, how those skills should be demonstrated, as well as when food handlers should be able to demonstrate them. These guides and the skills detailed in them have been agreed by industry experts, inspectors and training providers. And the best thing about them from your point of view is they're free. They're free to download from our website and we've linked them in the um, section on the side where we have the resources. So the training skills are split into different levels. So level one is induction and this level is split into two stages. Stage one outlines what all new starters or new employees must be able to demonstrate before they start handling 
food in your premises. So these are the first steps I talked about earlier. Stage two outlines what all employees must be able to demonstrate within one month of starting work in your premises. Level one skills include skills like personal hygiene, hand washing, safe food handling, understanding cross-contamination, recording temperatures, checking, checking deliveries, etc. So it covers quite a wide remit of basic food safety skills. Level two skills are additional skills, and these cover what employees are expected to demonstrate when they've been working with you for some time. So for an employee working in a high risk area, they should be able to demonstrate these level two skills within three to six months. So a high risk area would be one where high risk ready to eat foods are being prepared and where there is a potential to put vulnerable groups or large groups of consumers at serious risk. So these employees who are working in a high risk area need to be able to demonstrate the additional skills, the level two skills within three to six months of starting work. For an employee working in low risk area, they should be able to demonstrate these level two skills within six to 12 months. And level two skills include skills like knowing the requirements for bacterial growth, pest control, ensuring food safety at various stages of the process, such as safe food storage, preparation, food safety aspects around cooking and cooling, transportation, etc. Level three then refers to the food safety skills for management. So these skills outline what's needed of managers and supervisors in food businesses and what they should be able to demonstrate. And there's no time frame associated with this. So it's more to do with when someone is appointed as a food safety supervisor or a supervisor within a food business or a manager, they must be able to demonstrate these level three skills. And obviously previously, they must have gone through level one and level two. And level three skills would include knowing about hazards to food safety, such as microbiological, chemical, or physical hazards that may make food unsafe. It could also include knowing things like about allergen management, operational hygiene, etc. This is an example of a food safety skill and how it's laid out in the training guide. I'm not going through to go through the entire text on this slide. But I just wanted to give you an indication of how detailed the training guides are. So you can see there, there's a lot of information. This is one, one of the first food safety skills that are in the books. So it's very detailed. Once you, you have the books, if you download them, you'll be able to follow along from the skills. So this food safety skill relates to the wearing of uniforms or protective clothing. So you can see there on the left hand side of the food safety skill is the wearing of the uniform hygienically. So that's the skill we're talking about. The next column then details how the employee can demonstrate that skill. So you can see certain things that the employee must do to be able to demonstrate that they're complying with the skill. And then finally, on the right hand side, you can see the actions that an employer needs to take to support that activity. So providing clean laundry, etc. So everything is very clearly laid out within the guides and it's the same for all of the levels of the guides. This is obviously a simple example, but I just wanted to show you how detailed the guides are and how I, I really do think for food businesses, they're a very useful way of enabling you to provide training to your staff. Also then included in the guides are checklists where you can record evidence of the training that you have conducted. And you can see here, they have the food safety skills and you make an adjudication as to whether each employee is competent or maybe they need a little bit of extra training and then you can come back to it and mark them off as being competent. So those are in the back of the training guides as well. So you can keep a record of it. And it, this is evidence then of the training application. So you've applied the training. So you've gone and you've looked at how that person is working in the kitchen or working in the manufacturing premises or whatever it may be. And you've adjudicated as to whether you feel that they're competent or not. And that training skill that we've just worked through will show you how they can demonstrate to you. It is important to record evidence that you've conducted training if this is the route you choose so that you're going to do it yourself. 
So make sure that you have a record of what training each employee has undertaken. It's up to you to decide how to record this training, but it is important to be able to demonstrate to an inspector that this training has happened. Otherwise, you're going to have done most of the work, but you're not going to get the credit for it. So there are training records included as part of the training guides, which we've just seen. And also, these are the training records that are included as part of the safe catering pack. And I'll talk a little bit about that later. But again, you can see it goes through, you can have one for each of the, the different employees and it goes through the different aspects that they need to be trained on, when they've been trained, how it worked, etc. You might like to draw up your own records or even certificates if you want. And you can use that as a way of recording the training that has happened. So it's up to you to decide how you record the training, but just make sure that it's visible and that it's available if an inspector comes and asks, can I see what training you've done? So make sure you do keep a note of it. As I said, if you don't, you've done most of the work, but you're not gonna get the credit for it. And if you do choose to do the training yourself, it doesn't necessarily have to be a course. It needs to provide trainees with sufficient information and tools to implement the food safety skills. Could be classroom based, either formal or informal. It could be on the job, perhaps with a more senior member of staff training somebody like a sit by Nelly kind of approach, or it could be a blended mixture of the two. However, it does need to be planned and it does require preparation. It's just simply not going to work if it's ad hoc or if it's done just on the fly. So FSAI has developed lots of training resources. And these are available on the FSAI website. If you have a look on the FSAI website, under the Food Businesses tab, you'll find a whole section on food safety training. And this includes materials that you can use to develop your own training, advice on how to choose a trainer, as well as a suite of e-learning modules that you can use to train your staff on specific topics. And there's also very good information that can be used for training in the sections on starting a food business, HACCP section, allergens, and safe catering pack. These are just some of the training aids and resources which have been developed by the FSAI. They include guidance documents, leaflets, and the training guides about which we've already spoken. There are online training resources and other materials that you can use also for face-to-face -face courses, such as our food safety training cards. FSAI has also developed an induction level food safety training program called Food Safety and You. This course is a train the trainer program. So somebody within your business delivers the induction training to your staff. The training course is a two day food safety skills workshop for managers, trainers and supervisors. It's a train the trainer course. So that means that the trainees trainers after they've done the course will be provided with a full suite of training materials and training aids so that when they go back to their business they can train the staff and they also sign up to a trainer's code of practice. The course then that is delivered back at work is an induction level course as I've said it takes about three hours in total to deliver it but it can be split into smaller sections to fit in with work practices etc. And it includes the use of video, workshop materials, and workbooks. It's very inclusive, suitable for all employees, and really does encourage implementation of the skills that are being taught. It's proved very popular amongst industry because it builds training capability within the business. It's cost effective, and the focus is on implementing the skills that are learned. We would hope to run this course towards the end of the year. Obviously, COVID has put a stop on a lot of the work that we had planned for this year. But if you are interested in attending this course, we could ask you to contact us at training at fsai.ie and we can add your name to the list. And then when things return to our new normal, I suppose, we will be in touch with the details of when and where the course will be run. The Safe Food to Go leaflet is a very useful leaflet that outlines the food safety skills food workers must be able to demonstrate before they start work. So these are the first steps I talked about earlier on. 
it's available to download from our website and it uses easy to understand language and really does provide a good starting point for starting some training with new people. The Safe Catering Pack is designed for caterers as a practical, easy to use food safety management system. In addition to the fact that it gives you, as a caterer, provides you with the food safety management system and therefore meets the legal requirement to have that in place, it also includes good and detailed information in relation to a number of skills which can be used as the basis for training. So you can see there, that's a, a information in relation to personal hygiene and it gives general advice and then it goes into very detailed almost work instruction like information in relation to um, that one's in relation to hand washing so you can see it, it really is suitable for very um for new staff for people starting off and there's a lot of visual aspects to it so it's very useful for all types of of staff that you might have in your business FSEI also has produced a, a lot of online learning resources. So these are freely available on our website and they include food information for prepackaged foods, food contact materials, and many others. And these online learning modules are very detailed. They provide an overview of the legal requirements in relation to a specific topic, and they provide guidance on how food businesses comply with, can comply with the law. So they're really good if you have an interest in any of these specific topics. They really give you a deep level of information and understanding as to how to comply with the law in that area. And we've also recently added um, what we're calling a, a micro learning resource. So a, a little small learning resource on our website. Um, and this called, it's called Why Food Safety Matters. So it comprises a short video, which is based on a true story of a young girl who did get food poisoning. And then it also includes additional information on the importance of food safety and tips on how to make food safety a priority in your business. And I do have to say the story is is very well told. I know I'm slightly biased, but it's told from both sides. It's told from the side of the, the mother of the girl that gets the, the food poisoning and also the side of the food business operator who really was trying and thought that he was doing everything correctly. But obviously something went wrong. Um, it's useful to even if you are doing training or you want to use it as part of refresher training for your staff. It, it's a useful little video. It's only a couple of minutes long. You can show it to your staff and it's quite sobering actually to watch. So if you have a lot of um, staff to train that maybe don't think that food safety is important, it can really hammer home that message quite well. Just a note in relation to the level three food safety skills. So these are the food safety skills for management. So if you're a manager or a supervisor in your business, it's important that you regularly check your knowledge things do change from time to time. So it, it is important to keep yourself up to date. Train yourself, attend events such as this one and read materials that are made available from reputable sources. So we've had quite a long discussion now about how you might ensure that you train your staff effectively. I'd like you to answer a question again now in relation to how frequently you should do refresher training. So I think you should see a poll appearing on your screen I've just gone too far. I think you should see a poll appearing on your screen. So if you can click into whichever answer you feel is most appropriate, and then we'll have a quick discussion on the results. Okay, so lots of lots of answers coming in. It's interesting to see when you're all clicking in on the answers, it's interesting to see how things change. Okay, they seem to have settled there now. So I see 21% have said refresher training should be done once a year. 8% have said twice a year. 10% have said when the need arises. And a whopping 60% have said that it should be done regularly and as a routine part of your work. So thanks very much for answering the poll. That, that's great to, to get that feedback. So, it is important to keep food safety training on your agenda all of the time. And you can do this through daily monitoring and supervision, maybe including it as a topic in your team meetings. You can review your own records and conduct in-house audits. Think about who needs to be trained, who, who's maybe fallen behind a bit, who could do it a little bit of extra help on a certain skill and how could you manage that? Maybe, you know, put them in with somebody more senior or somebody else who's very good at that skill. 
you can sign up to FSAI updates and you can use these then as part of your food safety training. Try and be creative and make sure that it works for your business. So why train? Simply put, it will going to help you to produce safer food, but it will also reduce the risk of things going wrong or things being done incorrectly. It raises the standards in your business and everyone will see that, staff and customers alike. It helps you comply with the law. It will protect your reputation and can even enhance your reputation. I certainly know over the past number of months, I've been very aware going into businesses and noting to myself who's well-trained or who isn't well-trained or who isn't implementing the correct procedures. And that's just in relation to COVID requirements. Customers do notice these things, even though they might not say anything, they might just not come back. It will reduce waste, especially waste that's associated with bad practices. For example, leaving chilled produce sitting out of the fridge, which then needs to be thrown out. And finally, it increases staff morale and retention. And if your staff are engaged with you and your business, things are going to be safer all around. So the messages I'd like you to take home from this webinar are, there's many training options available. You need to consider what's best for your business and for your staff. The application and the implementation of the skills while workers handle food is what is absolutely key. It's important to make food safety training a habit and not a chore. And we're here to help you. So thank you for your time and attention. I've really enjoyed giving this presentation on this webinar this morning. On screen now, you can see the different ways you can contact us here in FSAI. And I'm gonna turn back on my webcam now, and I think Elaine is gonna have some questions that you've asked during the session. So thank you. Hi Ruth, that was fantastic. I can see that it's been very, very well received. And so we can begin the Q&A session. Um, so the first question we have here relates to coffee shops. So the question is, what training is available and required for coffee shops? Okay, I hope somebody asked that at the start. <laughs> um, so I suppose we've gone through yeah. what is required. And again, I'd maybe refer back to the food safety the skills guides, the training guides, and um, they contain in it what everybody needs at the various different stages of their employment. So there's very detailed information in there. And obviously different people in your business require different levels of training. And again, if you're looking at either choosing a course or choosing a trainer, please refer back to some of the stuff I've talked about this morning about choosing the right course and the right trainer because it is important that the, the information that your staff get at the training is relevant is relatable that they can actually go back to their workplace and use it. Perfect, thank you. And so just, just for the audience's benefit, um, I will mention that a copy of the video of this presentation will go out with the follow-up email. So therefore you will be able to go back and check out any of the resources and see where they are on our website. Um, so Ruth, the next question is in regards to training. So this person is wondering if we carry out food safety or hygiene training. Okay. So the FSAI is a regulator and um, I suppose as a regulator, we have lots of different roles. We don't do a huge amount of food safety training for businesses. A lot of our training time would be spent developing courses, maybe for inspectors um, on new pieces of legislation and how they can be implemented in businesses when they're doing inspections. But one of the courses that we do do is the food safety new course, which I mentioned earlier. And that's the one that trains people within your business to train their colleagues. So it's a train the trainer course. We haven't run it in the last few months. Um, we do have a list if you're interested in doing that course. We hope to run it again towards the end of the year when we get back to our new normal. Um, so if you are interested, you can email us at training at fsai.ie and we'll put you on the list and then we'll get in contact when we have dates and venues. Perfect, thank you. Um, our next question is in regard to whether we have a list of registered food safety consultants or trainers that we would recommend. Okay, 
we don't maintain a list of food safety trainers or approved. We don't endorse or approve anybody. Um, there's simply, we, we couldn't be everywhere to check that everybody's doing everything right. Um, so what we do is advise you as to how, what things you should look for in a trainer. So <clears throat> we had that nice, what I think was a nice little graphic in relation to how to find the perfect trainer. So looking at things like, are they qualified? Have they experience in your sector? Will they tailor the training for you? Will they encourage management participation? So just to make sure that they, and also maybe they come recommended from a colleague within your sector or within the industry. So just to make sure that you're, you're careful as to how you choose a trainer, because it can be an expensive part of your business. Um, so it's important to make sure you get good value for money from whoever you do choose. Okay, perfect. Thanks so much, Ruth. Um, we will do two more questions. So the next question I have here is in regard to record keeping. So the, the reason asks if I can carry out if I carry out in-house training myself, is SC6 training record from the Safe Cation Pack, is that enough to present to an EHO or do they need training certs? So I suppose what is required as evidence? Okay, so when an inspector comes into your business, if you've done the training yourself, an inspector really is going to be more interested in looking at how the skills are implemented. So is somebody, you know, recording the temperatures correctly? Is somebody um, making sure that they handle produce or food correctly and making sure that they're not having poor hygiene practices? That's really what an inspector is going to be looking for. But you do need the paper to back it up. <clears throat> excuse me, you do need the paper to back it up. So those training records are good. And then what would also be a useful thing would be to have a note of what you covered in your training. So maybe even if it's a note in the back of your diary or you know a, a little outline of what you're going to cover either at staff meetings or in a session that you're going to do with training, who was there, what date it was, you know, what did you cover, things like that. Um, mm -hmm. So the, the training guides are a really good way of keeping a record, but you know you need to make sure that the, the training is being implemented as well. And that's what really what an inspector will be looking for. But you don't necessarily have to have a certificate. Perfect. Thank you, Ruth. That's a very comprehensive answer. And I have no doubt that our viewers will find that useful. I do have one final question. It's in regard to pitfalls. So this person is asking, what are the biggest pitfalls that you know, businesses make in regard to training? Pitfalls, so problems, I suppose, in relation to, yeah. to training. Yeah. Okay, okay. Um, so I suppose probably the, the biggest thing is that people go on a training course and then come back to the office or come back to the, the work, their workplace and don't implement what they've learned. And there's a couple of reasons for that. And I think probably the biggest reason is that uh, there's two really I suppose one of them is that the training that they do isn't relevant so <clears throat> they're not getting real life examples that they can think oh yeah well that's what happens in our business that's what happens to us last week or last month or last year or whenever so they're not relevant to them so then when they come back to the business it doesn't make any sense to what they're doing so that's one of the things if the training's not really relevant to that to what they're doing and how they're working and the other issue can be sometimes when um, people might get their staff trained but then they don't provide the supports to enable the people to actually put the learning into practice so maybe somebody comes back from a training course or they've been trained by a colleague and they say well actually no in my section in the kitchen I think it would work really well if we implemented this new procedure and I think it would improve food safety and it would stop blockages and things being left out of the fridge for a period of time or whatever and it's important then that management do support them to be, enable them to make those improvements and sometimes that piece is missing if the management aren't committed to allowing the people to implement what they've learned so I think that's kind of the main problem is that it doesn't get implemented afterwards and how to how to avoid that is you know make sure the training is relevant that they get examples that are real to them and also then to make sure that the management commitment is there so when people come back they can actually implement what they've learned and they're encouraged to implement and share what they've learned. Perfect, thanks very much Ruth, that's great. That brings our Q&A session to an end. If we didn't get to your question, please do send it to our info email address. So that's info at fsai.ie, so info at fsai.ie and we will come back to you in due course. 
Um, so now I actually do have a question for the audience. So I'm going to run a poll and it's to do with the best time for these events. We, over the past um, you know, weeks and months, we have received such positive feedback in regard to them. And so today we're asking you what time suits you best for these events? Because we want to put monitor time that's convenient for you. So I can see that the different results are coming in here. We will look at these um, afterwards and we will um, use this information to implement our future events. So I can actually see that 10 to 11, the time that we've run this one does, does suit the majority of you. Um, so we will come back and look at these um, results again and uh, use that information for future events. So thanks so much for, um, for doing the poll there. Um, so if you did enjoy today's um, event, do subscribe for our event alerts. So our, on our website, if you um, or even on, on Google, if you type in www.fsai.ie forward slash subscribe, it will bring you to our event subscription at sign up list. And so if you just subscribe there, you will get alerts for our events every time they go out. Um, I do want to say thank you for joining us this morning and thank you to all of you who have joined us both this morning and you know previous weeks and months. We've really enjoyed uh, putting on these events and you know the engagement and feedback we've gotten from you has been fantastic so thank you for that um this is our last event for the summer months but we will be back in the autumn and we look forward to putting on more events on different topics and some topics which you have recommended to us so we're, we are working on that at the moment so from myself from ruth from everybody at fsai we will say bye for now and we hope to see you again soon thanks so much bye thank you Bye. Thanks a lot.